everybody. Thank you for buying one of our package deals of our tasting bites. Um, in the next couple minutes, I'm gonna go through some tasting notes and how we take them, what we pull out of them. Uh, but at first, what we always like to do in our tasting room is give you kind of a background as to how we started the process. We feel like it's a really important thing for everybody to know and we're all pretty, uh, pretty in love with 291 with this story. Uh, so 291 has been a distillery now for about eight years altogether in the Colorado Springs area. We are probably one of the longest running ones in Colorado Springs. The owner is a man named Michael Myers. Uh, as many of you guys know, he's not Austin Powers or the serial killer, even though his name is Jason Michael Myers. It would be really funny, but at least he's always got a good costume for Halloween. Um, Michael was a fashion beauty photographer in New York City for a long time, so he shot for Allure Magazine, Vanity Fair, Estee Lauder. We have a Sam Elliott photo in the tasting room that's about 20 to 30 years old, and uh, if you ever watch us on the ranch, you can definitely see from season on two, Sam Elliott and Ashton Kutcher and everybody are always drinking 291 whiskey. Um, you'll see us on a couple different shows too, so let us know if you guys have seen us yet. Uh, in 2001, Michael lived about three blocks away from the World Trade Center with his two boys who were under the age of five and his wife. Um, they lived about on the 34th floor of their building, so pretty close, probably a beautiful view at that time. But on 9-11, Michael had to walk his boy to school when the first plane crashed into the building. Um, obviously, that's a very traumatic time for us as a nation, and I'm pretty sure it was hard for him and his boys to see that. Fortunately, everybody was safe and was able to get out of that area. The only bad thing is that they just were not able to go back to their apartment at that time. So they were looking for a different place to go, and his in-laws lived in the Colorado Springs area, and they decided that this was gonna be a good place for them to kind of like reset. Um, the only bad part about that is that Michael was not able to do fashion beauty photography in the Colorado Springs area. If you've never visited Colorado Springs, it's very different than New York City. Um, so Michael's life for a long time was getting on a plane Monday morning, flying out to New York, doing a bunch of photo shoots, coming back Friday night, and then hanging out with his kids for a couple days, and then doing it all over again. Um, he did that for quite a few years. And I know I've flown to New York City, it's pretty tiring, and I can only imagine doing that weekly. Uh, seems like a lot. Michael felt like it was just really wearing on his time and his health and being with his family. He loves his boys. He feels like that is his life. If there was one last day, he would definitely want to spend it with his boys no matter where it was at. Um, so Michael was kind of looking for a different career path to keep him kind of closer to his family. And he was flying back from a Vanity Fair shoot when he read an article in the New York Times about Hendrix Gin and Sailor Jerry Rum and how the owner of those two spirits actually had nothing to do with alcohol prior to that, which is crazy because you see Hendrix Gin and Sailor Jerry, Rum, uh, Sailor Jerry Rum everywhere. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so the article was basically talking about his life and how he did marketing for a magazine prior to even creating those two spirits. And when Michael read that, he was like, this is awesome. Uh, this guy and I pretty much have very similar lifestyles and it's awesome that he just quit his job and decided to do something completely different. And that kind of stuck with Michael, it kind of lit a little light bulb off. Um, so for a while, Michael thought that he would love to brand a whiskey, and eventually somebody asked him, why don't you just make your own? And that kind of stuck with Michael. Uh, being raised in Southern Georgia, I'm sure he saw a bunch of people moonshining and making whiskey in the backwoods of that area. Uh, at this point, I think that whiskey is definitely running in Michael's blood. I don't know if he has a real blood type or a whiskey blood type. Um, but it kind of stuck with him, and he decided that that was going to be his next move. So it took him a little bit longer to quit his international photography business, but he did. And he decided that Colorado Springs was going to be the area to start his new distillery. Um, you've got to do a couple different things in order to start that. The first thing is that you've got to have a location. So right now, what we're in is about 7,500 square feet. Our tasting room is about the size of what Michael started with, so about 339 square feet altogether. Um, so very, very tiny. It was in a basement room of a building that's pretty much next door to us over here. Our location, the next thing to do was get your GSP, so a distillery license. Um, that usually takes about eight months altogether. Michael did it in about a quarter of the time, so about six weeks altogether. 
Uh, he always jokes and says that if he did not make any good whiskey, at least he could fill out some paperwork for people who do, which is always great because either way you're drinking whiskey. Um, the third thing and the coolest thing that we've got is that you have to have equipment. Um, Michael looked at a brand new still, realized that it was going to be about $50,000 for a brand new still, which is really unrealistic to him at that time. I don't know anybody else who would really be able to do that. And being that he's never homebrewed before in his life, that's a pretty big jump. So he looked into building his own. Uh, realized that all you really need were copper plates and somebody to weld them together. And Michael's photography career actually kind of helped him out moving forward on our 291 career path. Uh, he did a whole art show around something called Photo Revere. So Photo Revere is taking a copper plate, getting an image engraved to, into it, and then getting a couple prints out of it. These images behind me are actual, for, actually from Michael's Photo Revere art show, which is such a beautiful thing. It was basically a story describing his life. So because he had those copper plates lying around, he got them sent over from New York. Um, and him and his friend decided to measure them out, weld them together, and turn them into our first still. I know that you guys aren't here right now, but if you were to come into our story, we would show you that the new still, or the still that we are using, uh, our very first still, has some amazing engravery still on it, which is really, really beautiful. It's made up of about six or seven pieces all together, which is such a beautiful thing. I think that's why our whiskey is really, really good, because everything has touched that still from day one got a lot of love and passion from his past life for bringing it over into his future. Um, but Michael pretty much had everything lined up and decided that he needed to kind of create his own little mash bill. Uh, his favorite ride is Tom's Handy, so he was very, very inspired by that type. He wanted to do a very stand-up cowboy whiskey, very westernized, very bold, beautiful, much like Colorado. So because of that, he made his own mash bill practiced a couple few runs, uh, released his first clear out of the still on 9-11 in 2011. He had taken it to a distillery event and there was a couple people there who had, were able to try it. Uh, they were like, this is amazing. You need to start aging it and bottling it now. So Michael obviously has done something right and created this beautiful spirit. Uh, so he had to definitely create a name for his brand. And 291 was kind of a number that popped up pretty often for him. So when he was studying photography in school, he read an article about the first art gallery in the world to take photography as a high-end art, and that was Art Gallery 291 on Avenue 291 in New York City. Uh, but when he was reading the art gallery uh, interview, or I, like, shoot, I should say research paper, um, he was living in dorm room 291, so it was a number that was very, very important for him at that time, and ever since then, we've pretty much always noticed 291 popping up. Uh, you know, that's a really cool, inspirational thing, and he feels like that means a lot to him. He also says that, you know, being in a dark room and taking pretty much a raw image and turning it into a beautiful print is very, very, very similar to being in a distillery and taking raw grains and turning it into a beautiful spirit. The only positive thing now is that you can drink it, which is always really fun. Uh, so since then, Michael has been pretty successful in where we're at. Uh, we've won world's best rye in 2018. This year we won America's Best New Make with our White Dog, which is our unaged rye. Um, pretty much all of our bottles have won an award. We've won a couple different awards as a distillery. We have bumped up now to about a team of 14, which doesn't seem like a lot, but Michael started by himself or with a couple different friends after a while. Um, his first employee was hired three years after. So since then we've just kind of been up and running and we're able to try about eight different spirits on your guys' five ship, which is really awesome. Being that we've only been running for about eight years, that's an amazing thing. Um, all the awards we've won for an eight-year thing, that's pretty impressive. So I really hope that you guys enjoy 291 as much as we do as our family, and I really hope that you guys know that once you drink 291, you're family. So I know that you're in the crew now. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy this. Hey there, 291 family. Uh, welcome to our virtual tasting room. You guys are going to do our whole flight, which is so exciting. This is my favorite thing. If you come and stop by and visit us at the tasting room, um, this is definitely what we do. So this is a full-on experience with me. Uh, so we are going to go through about eight different spirits. Uh, we do eight quarter ounce pours since you're at home. I can't tell you how much you want to pour, but be careful because you got a lot of them coming. Um, we're going to start with our first four. So these guys 
are going to be our bourbon mash bill. We do 80% corn, 19% malted rye, 1% malted barley. The first one that you guys are going to try is going to be our unaged one, so our fresh. Um, it got its name because it's fresh as the snow. So it's one of those cocktailing spirits. Um, you can drink it neat, but we recommend putting it in a beautiful cocktail, drinking it for summertime. It's light and refreshing. If you're not typically a whiskey drinker, this is definitely one of the ones that you can start with. Uh, it is straight out of the still, cut with water, brought down to 90 proof. Um, it's gonna be more of that like peppery kind of taste. We do something called the whiskerito with it, which is really amazing. It's light, it's refreshing, it's delicious. Um, I no longer drink tequila. All I do is drink fresh whiskeritas. Um, I hope that you can try those too. So our next one is gonna be our American. This is kind of like an ode to an Irish or a Scottish whiskey. We age it in a used barrel. So basically we'll take our bourbon barrels, age those, and then take the barrels, put our American in it, and age it for about seven months altogether. Um, this guy is gonna taste very similar to a Highland Scotch. So it's gonna be a lot more of those like fruit and florally notes in the front half with a lot of those baking spices and like fresh cut leathers in the back half. Um, it's cut with water and brought down to 90 proof, which is really awesome for a summertime whiskey. Um, throw it in some sweet tea, drink it on the porch with your friends and you won't be mad. Uh, the cool thing about the American and the fresh is that these guys can ask some charcoal mellowing. So basically we'll lay out some charcoal, run our spirit through it, make sure that it pulls out those impurities and makes it a little bit smoother for you to drink. Um, I definitely love them. I think that every one of our cocktailing Actually, every one of our spirits has a purpose and a reason, and you can't really find a favorite. Um, but this guy is cut with water and brought down to 90 proof. So, the next two of our bourbon mash bill is going to be our actual bourbons. These guys are aged for just about a year in 10-gallon virgin white American oak barrels. We do a heavy level char on the inside, so about a level four, which is called the alligator skin. Uh, we also do a really cool finish, and it's really unique for us. It makes us a really good Colorado whiskey. Uh, we do an Aspen State finish. So if you don't really know what that is, like, tell me about it. Um, we take Aspen States, charm in the back with Aspen charcoal, and then throw them into the barrel for the last three weeks of their life in that barrel. Uh, it kind of gives it more of that like minty green kind of taste on the front half, and those baking spices are definitely kicked up on the back half. Um, your first one is going to be that small batch. So cut with water, brought down to 100 proof. You're gonna get a lot of that like vanilla, caramelized kind of smells and tastes out of it. Um, I pull banana, which is very, very different. Some people pull everything different. So I hope that you and your friends can enjoy and see your taste buds changing and being very different. All right, so our last one of this bourbon mash bill is gonna be our barrel proof. This guy, compared to the small batch, is different in the sense that it's not cut with water. Um, same aging process, so aged about just a year in those 10 gallon barrels with that three week Aspen State finish. Uh, because it's not cut with water, it usually ranges from 126 to 129 proof. Every bottle is gonna be a little bit different. Um, the one that I am trying today is gonna be at 126.2. So it's gonna give you more of that like creme brulee, banana fosters kind of taste. Um, it is a little bit more stronger and intense, but I can feel like I pull out a lot of that flavor profile out of it. Um, the barrel proofs are definitely my favorite. I think that I cannot go down to anything less than that at this point. <laughs> um, hopefully you guys enjoy this one. So now we're gonna move on to our next ones. Um, I changed out my glass. I usually do that when we're here in the tasting room. Um, I tend to change out the glasses from our bourbon mash build to our rye mash build. So if you guys would like to do that, I suggest that as well. If not, it's okay, you're drinking it either way. Um, so, our next three that we're going to move on to are going to be our rye. Uh, these guys are 61% malted rye, 39% corn. The first one that you guys are going to try is going to be one of those unaged ones. So, kind of like the fresh on our bourbon mash bill, um, this guy is going to be meant to be more of like a cocktail spirit. Uh, it can replace tequila, vodka, or gin in a cocktail. It is pretty interesting. Um, we do have to let it hit a barrel for less than a week so it'll basically go into a barrel and then we'll pour it out it's cut with water and brought down to 101.7 proof um if you guys smell it it's going to smell like a moonshine and it like might kind of kick you on your throat on the way down but it's going to taste completely different 
Um, I get more of like an artificial candy taste out of it. Um, I know other people have a hard time describing it in general, but if you think about rye bread, it's very funky, it's very different. It stands out and lets you know who it is as a, as a wheat or grain, I should say. Um, so it is cut with water, brought down to 101.7 proof. If you guys wanna try that, it's amazing. Um, if you're not really interested in, in tasting it neat, you can use it as a cocktailing spirit. Um, I really love it in cocktails. I think it is a standout spirit on its own. We infuse it a lot. So right now at the tasting room, we've got a cranberry infusion. Uh, and we're gonna move on to a blueberry and basil infusion, which is really, really good. Mix it with some citrus and some like sugary sweetness, and it's a perfect thing. So after that white dog, we're gonna move on to our actual rice. Uh, these two are gonna be very similar to our bourbons, um, where we age them for just about a year in those 10 gallon barrels with a three week Austin State finish. The first one's gonna be that small batch, so cut with water, brought down to 101.7 proof. Um, in 2018, we won World's Best Rye with our single barrel rye. Uh, since then, we've moved over to small batch within the last couple months, which is gonna give you more of like a consistent taste. Um, I didn't think that we can get very much better than that single barrel, but that small batch is next level for me. Uh, it's cut with water, brought down to 101.7 proof again. So our last one of our rye mash bill is gonna be my favorite out of our flagship. This is gonna be our Colorado barrel proof. Um, it is basically gonna be the same aging process as our small batch, so aged for just about a year, with that three week Aspen State finish in those 10 gallon virgin white American oak barrels. Um, not cut with water though, usually ranging from 126 to 129 proof. The one that I'm gonna drink is at 127.9. Um, this is pretty much why all of us work here, I think. Uh, it's a phenomenal whiskey. It, is basically like rye bread French toast with the maple syrup on the back half. So when Michael was creating 291, he really imagined a very cowboy westernized whiskey and this was kind of his standout staple piece. Um, it's very, very much come into a stand-up bar, get a shot of whiskey. Hopefully this is a little bit more refined at this point and maybe rode your horse here. Uh, but overall, this is definitely my favorite. I hope that you guys enjoy it too. So we have hit the end of our run. This is gonna be your guys' very last one. This is our dessert one and our finisher. Um, it is called The Deck. The Deck is going to be our liqueur. Um, so it's very, very different than the rest of the bottles that we have on right now. This guy kind of has a funny story behind it, so we like to tell the story before we get you to drink it. Um, we go to a lot of distillery events, and one of them is up in Breckenridge called Still on the Hill. Um, if you've never been, you should definitely check it out. But we go there, we like to serve um, our spirits as well as a cocktail. People get a vote on people's choice of that event. Um, and that year that Michael was going, he was gonna serve Whiskerita, so our version of the margarita with the fresh, so this little guy over here. Um, we tend to do it in a slushy form. If you've never tried it, stop by our tasting room for spring or summer. It's really, really good. If not, try it at home. We've got our recipe online. Um, but Michael woke up the day of the event, saw snow on the ground, and decided that he could not serve a whiskerita on a slushy day, um, which is understandable. I usually think of whiskeritas or margaritas on a sunny kind of at the beach or eating tacos with a bunch of friends. Um, but Michael decided to scratch that idea and he was driving around trying to relate some kind of flavor profile and memory to the snow and wound up at a grocery store, picked up some citrus, some clove, and a couple different spices, um, went back to his hotel room and grabbed his Mr. Coffee Pot and started practicing it through his Mr. Coffee Pot, which is a pretty crazy thing. Um, it's, we're very fortunate now that we've kind of upgraded from then and started making a, making it a different way. We don't have a thousand Mr. Coffee Pots back there anymore. So um, this guy got taken to the event um, and won people's choice at that little distillery event. So Michael definitely had to bottle it at that point. Um, he needed to create a name, and so the first time he tried it, he was like, wow, this is so good, you can drink it on the deck. But if you drink too much, you hit the deck. Typically, liqueurs are gonna be at 40 proof, and this guy's at 70, so it's a little bit more intense than a normal liqueur, but it is equally as good and equally as, basically, you put it in the name. Um, I like to do a waffle when it's cold out, so hot apple cider. Um, I do it in a hot toddy. 
I substitute my simple syrup in an old-fashioned with um, the duck, which is really, really good. It kind of gives it a different little kick on it. Um, you also can bake with it. You can pretty much drink it over ice, anything and everything. It's Christmas in a cup, so it is so good and so delicious, but it's going to be at 70 proof for you guys. Um, I hope that you guys really enjoy the deck, and I'm really glad that you guys are our tasting flight with us. Maybe if you're in the Colorado Springs area, you can come do a full tasting flight at our tasting room, and that would be really, really awesome. We would love to have you. All done with our flights. Um, I hope that you guys really enjoyed them and you had such a good time. I know I always do every time I do a flight. Uh, I would love for you guys to come in and check us out if you're in the Colorado Springs area. Buy some bottles from us at this point. Once we're up and running, come do a tasting flight with me. But if you are not in the Colorado Springs area, check out Reserve Bar or your local liquor stores. Um, 291 is in as many places as we can get into at this point. If you are from out of state, check our website. You can find the local liquor store that's closest to you that has us. Uh, if you guys would... <laughs> I really hope that you guys enjoyed our flights. Uh, I think that I would love to hear from you and know which one your favorite is. We love interacting with the people who are 291 fans. We always say once you drink 291, you're family at this point. So connect with us on social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever you think. We're always here for you. I know this time's a little bit harder and we're really trying to make everything happy. Please hashtag 291 family. Hashtag your quarantine cocktails if you got any cocktails going on send us pictures, anything and everything that you want to do. We're here for you. Um, hopefully we see you soon. Bye.